In this presentation, we're going to be looking at detachable stock warrants. These are warrants that are issued with a debt security, namely bonds in this case, but they can be sold separately or they are uh, separated from the bonds. And what this warrant does is it gives the uh, warrant holder the right to pur purchase a certain number of shares of the company's stock as a designated price. Now, when we issue these uh, uh, bonds with these detachable warrants, we have to divide up the uh, bond between its liability portion here and the equity portion that it represents here. And that equity portion would be uh, those uh, detachable stock warrants. And we do that using two different methods. We either use the uh, proportional method or the incremental method. And we make this uh, separation here between debt and equity so when we when these uh, warrants here are exercised we can allocate their uh, price here or the um, what we receive for them as part of the equity portion of our exchange okay here we're going to be looking at detachable stock warrants and we're going to be using the proportional method or the relative fair value method to evaluate the debt inequity portion of this debt security that we uh, issued here with uh, detachable stock warrants. And we use that method when we know both the uh, liability portion of this debt security we issued and the equity component of that debt security. So let's go down and look at our example here. So we're, uh, we have bonds that are selling at $9,800 each that's a known amount here that's their market value and they have these detachable stock warrants and they have a market value of forty dollars each so what we have to do is we have to go up here and we have to figure out their relative percentage here so we in this case we had a hundred bonds that we have issued here and they have uh, since they have a ninety eight hundred dollar uh, price per bond we know that their total value here is ninety eight thousand dollars and then the market value of the warrants at forty dollars a piece at one warrant per bond we have a uh, four thousand dollars assigned to those warrants so the total aggregate uh, fair value here is a hundred two thousand so the relative percentage assigned to the market value of the bonds here would be the ninety eight thousand divided by the hundred and two thousand total aggregate value here for ninety six point one percent and then the uh, mark uh, these warrants their relative percentage here would be based on ter their total value here of four thousand dollars divided by the hundred and two thousand dollars so that would equate to three point nine percent here so we got the total of of our relative percentages here equating to a hundred percent so what we do is we go up here and we allocate this uh, debt portion and equity portion based on what we received for those bonds when we issued them. In this case it was $101,000. So to figure our, our liability portion of those bonds we would take the 96.1% uh, that relative of value assigned to them times this uh, uh, amount that we received when we issued them here and uh, that 101000 So we have a total amount here of $97,061 assigned to our bonds payable. Now for the equity portion those would be the that would be the warrant uh, value of those bonds here. You would take that relative percentage here 3.9 percent times this total amount that we received and we issued them here of 101,000 and we come up with thirty nine hundred and thirty nine dollars here. So that would be the equity portion or the value of those warrants. Okay, let's look at how we'd record these warrants once they're exercised. And our example here will be for 80% of the warrants being exercised. So going down here and looking at our example again here, one warrant gives us the chance to buy 10 shares of $10 par common stock at $37 per share. And then the total shares uh, that could be converted based on the warrants here would be 100 bonds issued times 10 shares per bond or 1,000 shares of common stock. And then the total warrants here, of course, we have 100 bonds uh, that were issued and we'd get one warrant per bond or a total of 100 warrants. 
So the first thing, let's go up here and look at our cash, what we would have received for these uh, warrants here. So we take the, the number of warrants, it would be 80 in this case, times the number of shares per warrant, that would be 10. And then the value here per share was $37. So we'd have a total amount here of $29,600 for the cash we received on those warrants. And then we have to go down here and reduce this uh, additional paid in capital for the warrant amount. So we, what we would do here would we look at the amount that we exercised here, 80% times the uh, balance that was sitting in this additional paid in capital. And we'd get in this case $3,151 here. So we'd reduce this uh, warrant here, this additional paid in capital for the warrants by $3,151. And then going up here to our common stock, we would increase that by the number of shares that were issued here times its par value or $10 per share for a total amount here of $8,000. Now this additional paid in capital to common stock, that would be increased here and that's only by the uh, balancing amount here between the uh, uh, credit here to common stock and this credit here that we'd make the additional paid in capital of 24751 That would balance here with our debit amount here an additional paid in capital for the warrant and then the debit amount here for the cash of $29,600. So this uh, additional paid in capital for common stock is just the balancing entry between the debits and the credits. Okay, along with those uh, stock warrants, we also have to take care of this bonds payable or the debt portion of that uh, bond when it was issued. Now, I just using the internal rate of return, I've taken the cash flows from that bond here and plugged them into my internal rate of return function and determined that the internal rate of return in that band was, uh, in this case, it was 5.093 5 percent per period, two periods for 10.186 annual percentage here. And then I just put it into my amortization schedule here. So I amortized this bond down using the effective rate of interest method. And this I did because we have to uh, record the cash payments on that bond. And also we have to recognize the interest expense on that bond. And we have to amortize it down such that when it becomes mature, we have a balancing amount here on our balance sheet. So just remember, you have to take care of the uh, bonds payable um, by amortizing it. And in this case, I would have used the uh, effective interest rate method for amortizing this bond.